Hello. Today we are going to talk about how to complete a qualitative analysis or review a qualitative article. What is qualitative research? Qualitative research is research that uses observations, interviews, and supplementary materials in a natural setting to describe a phenomenon. When we look at what should be included in a qualitative study, it's quite similar to what we would look at for a quantitative study. We're going to look at a basic description of the study and the research question. We're going to look at the qualitative design that was used to collect the information. We would want them to provide information on the sample and methods, as well as how the data was analyzed and coded, and then lastly, having a thorough discussion on the results. When we look at the basic description of a qualitative study, we're looking at a lot of the same information as a quantitative study, including the purpose of the study um, and any background information that relates to that purpose. So the purpose could be related in a qualitative study to understanding behaviors, identifying different themes, identifying meaning and understanding, and understanding holistic experiences of an individual or a group of people. In addition to the purpose and the background information, we're also going to want to know a little bit of personal information about the researchers. This does differ from a quantitative study um, in the sense that with a qualitative study, we want to know any biases that the researchers may have. And the biases may be based on the way that they interpret information, prior experiences that they've had, their cultural understanding and upbringing. Um, and when we look at all of those different factors and how it can impact the collection and interpretation of data, we call that reflexivity. So in the basic description of the study, the researchers should make some comments about the reflexivity and any biases that occurred. Um, in the discussion or the basic description, they can also discuss how any biases were minimized and how the biases may have impacted the results of the study. In addition, we should identify the strategy or the research design that was used for the qualitative study. Um, by identifying what that study is and why that researcher chose that specific design is going to be very important, as well as any background information on how that research design was developed and the intended purpose of it. Sometimes the research design closely matches the purpose of the study, and sometimes researchers may use a design that's quite different than what is typically intended for that research study. Um, if they use one that is different, we would want to know why they chose that. And then lastly, we would want to know any ethical considerations and biases. Um, it's going to be very important that we understand the IRB process and that IRB permission was obtained in order to conduct this study. When we look at the different types of qualitative designs, there's many different designs. Um, typically, most researchers use one of the five most common ones that we're going to talk about today. So the first type of qualitative design is the narrative design. And this includes studying the lives and stories of individuals, either through interviewing the participants and getting their narrative, or through looking at different articles, pictures, um, and documents that may have obtained or related to their lives. And this is often done with consideration to time and chronology. So we would often start at the beginning of the event that we want the narration of and work them through the process as time progressed. The narrative design is often similar to historical records and often deal with historical research. Phenomenology is another qualitative design where we look at describing the experiences of individuals. So in this particular design, we would identify individuals that have been exposed to the same phenomenon, and we'd want to research their specific and individual experience during that phenomenon. This is mostly done through interviewing and is based in philosophy and psychology-based research. Ethnography is another design where we look at the shared patterns and values of a cultural group. And this could be by understanding and observing different behaviors, language, the way that individuals within that cultural group think or act, the way that they understand different things, and any important symbolism or rituals to that cultural group. In order to do an ethnographic qualitative study, we often observe the culture in their natural environment. 
we would need to do multiple observations over time. And in order to get access to do these observations, it's going to be important that we get permission from the groundskeeper. The groundskeeper is the individual that most commonly will be able to give us access to that cultural group and um, how to obtain the proper permissions. So in a qualitative design, the researcher should identify how they obtained access to the cultural group, because if we know that they got permission from the groundskeeper, we can lend more um, credibility and um, know that the researchers had ethnically approached it in an appropriate way. Um, we would also want to note that ethnography is often based in anthropology and sociology and may use both observations of current individuals within that cultural group, but it could also be looking at the history and artifacts of that cultural group as well. Then we have the case study, and this is an in-depth analysis of a time-bound activity or experience, and that may be a study of a specific program, an event, a process, or a diagnosis. In a case study, data is collected through observations, interviews, documents, and at times we may also use quantitative data. When we use both quantitative data and qualitative data to um, answer a research question, we would call that a mixed methods design. And then finally, I wanna talk about ground theory. So ground theory is a qualitative design approach that aims to gather a general understanding or theory of certain processes, actions, or interactions. Ground theory is a multi-step process where the data is collected in multiple points and using a couple of different strategies. And ground theory is often known to be the most rigorous and reliable approach. So after the design has been identified, um, we would look at how the researcher sampled or obtained participants for their study. In the qualitative data, we're more dependent on quality rather than quantity. So our sample size will often be much smaller than what we see in quantitative researches. Another thing about qualitative studies is we're not looking for generalization um, of the findings or general ability of the findings like we would in quantitative data. We're simply looking to understand a certain process or understand um, different phenomenons. So there's two different approaches to obtaining the proper amount of participants for a qualitative study. One is to gain saturation. So saturation is when you have interviewed enough people that you're finding the same themes. You're not gaining any further information by interviewing more individuals. Um, so once we know that we have a thorough understanding of the phenomenon in which we're studying, we can say that we've reached saturation. Another approach is to use the recommended sample size per specific designs. And like I said, this is gonna be much less than what we would see in quantitative data and it's going to vary between the different qualitative approaches as well. So in a narrative approach you typically only interview one to two people. In feminology we would approach it by interviewing between three and ten individuals. Ground theory looks at about 20 to 30 individuals. Ethnography looks at a full cultural group and a case study is typically four to five um, participants. A lot of times in order to participate in qualitative studies, the researcher may offer um, incentives to the participants and they want to be very careful in the selection of their individuals in the study in which they conduct their interviews and observations. Sometimes we have what's called backyard research where the individual that's doing the research will interview people that they're closely related to, whether that be family members, friends, coworkers, um, and while this is a much more convenient approach, it can also have a lot of biases. So we would want to make sure that the researcher would identify how they obtained their sample size. And if they did use backyard research, how that could have enhanced or limited their data collection. Then we look at data collection and analysis. Typically, we're going to use a couple of different tools when we do qualitative studies. And this is going to be the researcher's own observations. Um, they can use interviews, either by in-person, over the phone, um, orally, 
They're also going to look at different documents like letters, medical notes, newspaper articles, or anything that they may find. Um, and they can also obtain audiovisual aid. So this is looking at things like pictures, paintings, symbols, recordings, and music to understand certain phenomenons or experiences. The process to data collection and analysis with a qualitative study can be structured, or I'm sorry, it can be unstructured or semi-structured. Unstructured is when you go in with no specific questions or process and you just simply write down your observations and um, let the conversations develop as they're meant to in that situation. Semi-structured is where you allow a lot of that freedom and flexibility, but you also have some set questions that you intend to interview and ask over the time of your observations. Um, then you're going to identify your methods. Some common approach to the methods is to formulate your research question, identify the proper setting and sample, gain access to that setting, complete your observations and data collection, code the data, identify any themes and revelations in that coding, and then synthesize the data. When we talk about coding and da data analysis, what that entails is the researcher goes through and translates any interviews or observations into a transcript. That transcript is then analyzed and sentence by sentence, the um, topics that come up or the ideas that come up are identified by a particular word. We call that word the code. Then you can go in and identify the common words and take the information from each of those codes to see if you're noticing any patterns or themes. There are different approaches to coding and it would be important for the researchers to discuss which procedure they used. Hand coding is a much more thorough approach, but it's much more time consuming and there's also more room for human error. You can also use computer coding systems. You can code pictures, which is called visual coding. And the individual can either pick their own coding terms or they can use predetermined codes. And all of that information will help us to understand the rigor of the study. So then we move on to the discussion of the qualitative data that had been obtained. We want to look at any themes that had come up during coding. And the researchers should discuss if the themes were expected, a surprise, or unusual when looking at similar codes to other um, studies that have done in the field. The researchers should talk about their interpretation of themes and results. And again, we would want them to make any comments on any potential biases. Um, we would also want to look at the reliability and the validity of the study. The reliability and the validity of qualitative research is slightly different than what we would see in quantitative research. For qualitative research, reliability is consistency in the researcher's approach, whereas quantitative research, the reliability would be um, the consistency in the participants' responses. So again, reliability in qualitative research is the consistency in the researcher's approach. Reliability is strengthened by closely auditing transcripts and cross-checking any codes. Cross-checking codes basically means that we're looking for inner, um, inner coding reliability. So you would have multiple people look at the codes and look at the information. And if they agree on the codes that were identified and the um, themes that were identified through those codes, then we have strengthened reliability. Validity is the accurate portrayal of the sample's experiences. So in quantitative data, the validity is the accuracy in which the results can be generalized to a specific population. As I mentioned earlier, with qualitative data, we're not looking for generalization, but we are looking for um, validity in the sense that we want to be sure that we fully understand what the sample's experiences are and what they're trying to portray. This is strengthened by using multiple different procedures that may be things like member checking, clarifying any biases, using peer debriefing, making sure that our descriptions of the data collected is very thorough. We can use triangulation, external auditing, ensuring that we spend enough time to gather um, a full understanding of the experiences and other strategies may be used as well. 
In the discussion, researchers will often use quotes, dialogue, metaphors, and comparisons to other research to convey their findings. We would want them to identify any limitations in their study and how that may have impacted the study and what could be done in the future to minimize those limitations. And lastly, we would wanna look at the implications or what the information obtained in this study has to offer other individuals and our understanding and processes of different healthcare related um, interventions, understandings and experiences. And that is how we would go through a qualitative research study to determine if it is an appropriate and usable study for any evidence-based practice interventions that we may choose to use.